Well hello and today a few new products from our friends at AKK Tech. This time they've brought out their own F4 Omnibus flight controller. This is um, essentially equivalent to the F4 Pro it's got so you can connect up a, a current sensor, it's got the onboard SD card uh, and all the rest of the various features of the Omnibus boards, mainly the on-screen display which is really handy. And to go with that they've brought out their brand new VTX, this is the F2. Now the FX2 is similar to one I previously re reviewed called the X2 which uses smart audio. This of course has the form factor to fit directly on a mini quad stack which is really handy and has the MMCX adapter in the back which I find really good for fixing antennas onto. So I thought I'd put both of these on a quad and the quad I've chosen is this beastie. This is uh, an Xhover NXP230 Pro or something, which is, it's gone through a few reconfigurations. It's never really been that smoothly. I mean, it's got reasonable motors. These are T motor running at 2000 kV, so it really needs these six inch props. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if we can put that on board and because there's loads of room. Look, I mean, look at that. See if we can get this a little bit smoother. See what we can make of that. So, back in November, I did a whole bit showing the fitting of the FX2 mainly because. The weirdness of the MXP230 frame mean that I had to put the VTX sideways, which looked really silly with the antenna connection. But let's skip over to the actual flight of this and I'll show you what happened. So here we go, and as soon as I put the props up, this is just air mode on the floor, and you notice the OSD disappeared. And we've got these horrible little speckles going on in the DVR footage, and I'm like, what's going on here? Have I miswired something? And uh, well, the answer was no. Having checked it through and did a bunch more fixes that I'll come to in a second, my conclusion was that I hadn't done anything wrong, but this was doing weird things. As far as a flight goes, it's it seems to be working fine. The the F4 board's given a fairly good flight on this MXP230, probably the best one it's had. But obviously, we can't carry on with those. So let's try and bring ourselves a bit more up to date now. Now, that was actually filmed all the way back in November. So what since? Well, I went in and I attempted to fix what I thought was probably a grounding issue, tried to bring the common grounds together, but I just couldn't seem to fix it. It was interfering, the OSD was going completely. Not a real problem I, I've had before. I've had noise before, but to that extent, and being unable to fix it through grounding is a weird one. So, I mean, I had other stuff to do, so I thought, I'll come back to it, I'll come back to it. I kept putting it off. But um, then this little guy arrived. This is the Nebula 230, which I reviewed not long ago. Um, and what happened during that time is the flight controller failed and also the camera uh, seemed to fail as well. And I thought, well, here's a, here's a good idea to swap some stuff out because the VTX for that one wasn't particularly good either. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've put in the AKK F4 board and the VTX um, and I've basically decommissioned the MXP230. It's currently residing here in this bag of bits. So hence the X4R receiver on board, mainly because I'd run out of um, XM pluses. So yeah, this is now um, a bit of an AKK quad with the flight controller, the VTX and the antenna, uh, all AKK and the other stuff, uh, basically a mix of the original. It was quite interesting putting this inside because I was a bit confused about why they'd removed the RF shield from the original VTX here. And I think it's because the design of the quad leaves so little space here. You can see that the nice purpley thing is actually touching the heat shield there of the VTX, which isn't a great idea. And this isn't actually down all the way, but it's it, it's held in securely. But they, they basically having this thing here at all has had an impact on how much you can put in and this isn't a particularly tall stack so I went with putting it in this rather than fixing the original because sometimes it's like well is it the parts in that one or is it the setup so it's quite useful to be able to move them to a whole set of different parts that you know fly okay on other stuff it will tell you is the flight control or the VTX that's dodgy or is it uh, the ESCs or the noise coming through from them now the other thing I just wanted to mention is since November there's been a little bit of a hoo-ha about uh, smart audio and the third parties that were using it. I think mainly AKK, but there's some other people as well. Um, 
And it, it down to the fact that there was going to be a change in Big Flight 33, which would stop the third party ones being able to use it. But what's happened now is that's become an open standard. Uh, Trappy from TBS has released that, but also allowed people to work with him and license them properly. So I know that AKK are in talks to do that with TBS. So yeah, I've, I've spanned the props up. Um, well, I've spanned the motors up, not the props here, and it looked okay. So we'll take it out and we'll have a flight and we'll see what happens. So off we go with a freezing cold windy day at the field, but let's see how this does. And Hooray! Instantly it's better, because at this point last time I'd lost the entire OSD picture and I had speckles all over the screen. So this is fairly clean. There's, you know, a little bit of noise there, some some a few noise bands, but looked pretty good in the goggles. Looked very clean actually in the goggles. DVR puts a little bit of noise in. Um, but yeah, it's all going nicely now. That's much better, isn't it? It just goes to show that sometimes it's a weird combination of bits and uh, I guess the MXP230 was a bit of a franken quad in terms that it was built from sort of all sorts of bits and pieces that I had left and the power distribution was all a bit different on it but you know sometimes you're not lucky enough to have a, a whole separate other quad to try it on that's the only thing but it certainly worked for me and I was uh, lucky enough to have a spare quad with the right bits blew up so this is flying okay there's I've noticed there's a few little twiddles uh, under when I first put the power on there, there's there's a bit of a twitch which needs sorting out I also had a problem where the camera was initially loose you can see that the propellers are a bit high up the screen there and that needs sorting out so why don't we skip over to the second flight we did and see if that one's a bit better so having tightened the camera up and moved it up a touch, I've just been checking out the smart audio features and they work great. That's very much similar to the last smart audio version I reviewed, except this time, of course, it's on a nice stack that will fit in your mini quad a little easier. I'm running this on 200 milliwatts on uh, F1, which is my normal thing. So let's pop this up in the air again and just have a, a bit more of a fly around, see if the props stay in the right place in the screen here. Now, I must say, I'm not too much of a fan of the 2.8mm lens. Uh, I'd like to see a wider one. I, you know, I go all the way down to 2.1 if I can, but, you know, at least 2.5 and 2.3. It'd be great if AKK could uh, carry those options, because as far as the camera goes, um, it does good. I mean, it's it's a pretty cheap CCD camera, and it does okay in these conditions. I mean, these conditions aren't bad, but the camera does good, and uh, it's got a nice wide dynamic range and handles things fine. Because it's 2.8, I'm always a little bit worried about pointing the camera up too much because, of course, I want to be able to see the ground when I come into land as well. But as far as flying about goes, it, it feels perfectly normal and natural. You can kind of tell that it needs a bit more up angle if you're sort of going around doing a, doing a big turn and then putting power on to go forward and you end up going up more than you want. So it's, it's always a balance, that bit. But yeah, it's all good. A nice little combination, I think. So I'm happy to say the, the Nebula is flying okay. I've got a couple of tweaks to do on the PIDs here to get rid of that, that wobble under power. But yeah, the F4 board works well. The VTX works well and is in a, a nice stack formation there, which will be nice and easy. The camera, as I said, it's it's camera's fine. I would like a different lens and the antenna works well. So you can check all the bits on AKK. I've put some links in there and uh, of course the nebula came from Gearbest. of course now it's, it's half fury b and a half akk now i don't know what to call it the akkb or the the fury ack who knows anyway that's me for now i'm glad i've got that going again and i will catch you in the next video bye for now